Welcome to Vatican 6. I'm your host, Titan. Let's get to it. Thank you, everyone, for being here with me today. I'm going to talk briefly and about an op that we're going to do a press conference on this next Friday morning. So y'all stay tuned for more news on Friday morning. But this obviously became big news in Cartersville, Georgia at the police department and the information quickly leaked out. And so now all the news media is asking for this information. So you're getting a early preview of what's going to be a very interesting release of information on a human trafficking operation. As you know, we seek out the victims of human trafficking. And in order to do that, you do prostitution stings. Well, when you do these operations, as this one was hugely successful, we'll talk about Friday, you arrest Johns who are seeking out prostitutes as well. Well, let me introduce you to what I consider a high profile arrest. This is Deputy Chief Jason DePrima of the Cartersville Police Department. As I understand it, after talking to his chief, he's been there almost 30 years, graduate of the FBI Academy, well-respected police officer in town. Did you notice I said in town? But he was out of town. That's right, he was at an American Polygraph Association meeting in Orlando, Florida. Let me, let me say this clearly. I don't want you to miss it. Driving an unmarked vehicle that was normally assigned to the DEA task force, meaning their officer assigned to the task force would have driven this vehicle. But apparently his vehicle was not so good to make the trip, so he's in one of the undercover vehicles. When he shows up at our undercover operation in the government vehicle, carrying alcoholic beverages, apparently some Bud Light for himself and White Claw for our undercover operative. That's right, he bought a case of White Claw because she said she would like it. So ostensibly, this guy has come to have sex with a prostitute while driving the Cartersville Police Department undercover vehicle and he was in possession of alcohol, which of course, had we not intervened, he was going to drink that, engage in sexual conduct, and ultimately get in his government vehicle and drive back to his hotel. But newsflash, this is Jason DePrima, 49 years of age, his picture at the Polk County Jail. That's right, and let me tell you the story as he relates it to us. He is texting with Guess what? Our undercover detective. He started this conversation with her on Wednesday night where he was going to show up, but he became spooked. He didn't say why, but on Thursday night, he just couldn't resist the urge to be with our undercover detective who he thought was a high-class prostitute. So he once again began to communicate the, he asked how much the price is. She said $80 or a full half hour, $120. He said, I'm in. So he comes to the house. Ultimately, he's arrested. But the conversation is very interesting. He told her before the takedown occurred that the night before he had engaged with another prostitute online for $200. And that prostitute said, hey, go get a cash app card. You know, you can buy them at the convenience stores. And he did for $200. And then she said, I want you to take a photograph of it so I know you've got the money. Well, duh. He took a photograph and sent it to the alleged prostitute on Wednesday night according to him. You're not going to believe this. 
you can't even believe this. Now this guy's a cop, and he was flim-flammed and conned by a prostitute. That's right. She took the information off of the card, got the two hundred dollars, and left him high and dry. He was ripped off in a confidence scam with a prostitute or who was alleged to be a prostitute. So that was on Wednesday. Then he talks. He's, he's not giving up. Then he talks, and Thursday night at just before midnight, he shows up. He shows up with his white claw, and it's like, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What is going on? You're a deputy chief, a high-ranking official in a very respected police department, and you're showing up with white claw and two Bud Lights, and we're not sure whether he can do math or not, okay? Because the deal is for 120 for a half hour, a full half hour, he shows up with 180. He shows up with 180 and says, I can send you the rest of it on a cash app, but I had to stop to buy the White Claw. So for some reason, I don't know if he's planning on extra time, he can't add, he wants to leave a tip, he wants to impress this person. But listen to his text. He's real suspicious. I guess you would be after you got ripped off the night before. Listen to his text. If you're legit as you seem, we will have fun. If not, I'm riding around with a case of White Claw feeling girly. Well, he got to feel arresty when we put him in jail. So we put him in jail late on Thursday night under a $500 bond. He didn't get out of jail until Saturday morning at 4 o'clock. So he got to spend, you know, almost two complete nights in the county jail. So now he's gone from deputy police chief, as I understand he's suspended pending their disciplinary actions, and he's facing criminal charges here in Polk County. So if all else fails, he can write a book. How to Ruin Your Career in Three Easy Steps. Start out by going to Florida to a polygraph association school, then lie to the detectives when they investigate and ask you questions. Oh, he made admissions, but it's like, I wanted to ask him, since he's a polygrapher and was at polygraph school, would you like to take a polygraph with those answers you gave us? How would that work for you? And according to all the information we received, he's got a beautiful wife and a great family. And you, know, you just want to go, come on, man. Have you lost the last three brain cells? Or do you just have cabbage for brains? Why would you do that? Anyway, he's charged. He's managed, obviously, to create a great deal of angst with his family. His police chief is angry beyond words, which I certainly clearly understand. He's embarrassed the city. He's been a police officer there for a long time. And now he's facing criminal charges in Florida. Are there any questions? What, Not, what he said when he was arrested? What he said was he came there to hang out and watch football. Well, that was a partial admission. He admitted sending the text that we received that's part of the evidence. But, you know, you have to look at things to say, one, is it legal? Is it moral? Is it ethical? And does it pass the smell test? He lost on all four points. It's neither legal, ethical, moral, or passes the smell test. And I think what he should have done was say, hey, if I had to ask my chief or my wife, is it okay to go hang out with a girl 
over 20 miles away and watch football while I drink beer and she drinks White Claw? Is that okay? I think he would have gotten his answer. You would have thought as a high-ranking police officer, well-respected, he would have known better. But he didn't. And now he's got lots of issues. Home issues, work issues, criminal issues. What he's got going here is a situation. And he's in the middle of it. Any other questions? Well, it disappoints me for the industry. We all know better. Now, you've heard me stand right here before, behind this podium before about some of our folks who periodically, we've got over a thousand deputies, occasionally one of them does something inappropriate, and when they do, I, we arrest them. My detectives, who are simply the very best, arrest them, and I stand up here and I, I walk all over them about their criminal conduct and other police agencies, but it embarrasses me for our industry anytime you see this because the people have a right to and expect better of us. He embarrassed our entire industry with his arrest. But you know what? Here's one thing you can count on. Write this down in your little book. You come here, you violate the law, we're going to put you in jail. We don't care who you are because you become a criminal defendant and a criminal violator of the law, we're going to arrest you. That's just the way it is. But had he behaved, had he stayed at his polygraph association meeting, he'd been fine. But he worked all week. And so right now, think about it. He lost $200 to the, to the prostitute that ripped him off in a flim-flam, in a scam that he should have known he should have known better on a lot of levels. Then he brought 200 more that we got, $400. Then he got misdemeanor charges. I, I mean, I mean, this is just insane. The whole thing is insane. Sheriff, uh, you guys have done multiple operations where you be trying to get Johns for trying to get underage women to situations like this. Uh, just your overall thoughts on, I don't know, where we are as a country as far as these kind of, these becoming more more recurring as the days go on. Well, it, it's interesting that the overwhelming majority of the people that we've arrested in this operation aren't for Polk County. The majority of the people in Polk County have figured it out. I mean, after all, you have to live under a rock if you haven't seen some of our operations. I don't keep it a secret. A word to the wise suffices. I don't want people to violate the law. I don't want people to commit morals crimes that creates and supports an industry of human traffickers. I don't want to create an environment where predators seek young girls. So my detectives, I'm telling you, are simply the very best. And in this operation, which I'll talk about on Friday, we were joined by a lot of professional police officers from other police agencies that helped us. Because we're, we have a safe community. We have a community that looks out for the best interest of our children. We have a community that looks out for the victims of human trafficking. And we have identified some already because we have counselors that come to our human trafficking ops. But you know what? This guy's adding to the problem. And when you come here and add to the problem, you end up in a jail uniform like this. He knows better. He knew better. But you've got to not only hold the community to the standards of the law, you've got to behave and follow the law too, and he didn't. And he's got to pay the consequences for it. But the reality of it is, is let the word go forth. If you think you're going to attack children or create an environment in, for human trafficking, not in this county. Not now, not ever. Anything else? 
Okay, thank you very much. This is Vatican Six. I'm your host, Titan. Thank you for your time. And I'm gone.